Okay, everybody, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this this shower computer for a walk real quick. Ow, man, I got something on my arm. I need to get it fixed. It's like it's like skin. Oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? Um, I'm gonna try and see if I can uh, say something here about words. Damn, really? Um, for me specifically, uh, with when it comes to words, um, they're they're just as uh, organic and like oh, I know. Uh, just as organic and moving and growing as everything else. So even though the words themselves stay the same, i.e., the human form doesn't really change that much. I mean, sure, we can go ahead and twenty thousand year it or whatever, and you know, relate it to the shape of a monkey uh, and whatever other thing you want to come up with. But generally speaking, the essence um, of the form uh, stays the same. However. Uh, what the form shows up to, on the other hand, doesn't stay the same. Everything around the form changes. So when the form, uh, ooh, now that's nice. That's like straight up nice. Uh, when the form uh, shows up to this new space that's changed and tries to behave the same, it doesn't make any sense. So the word incorporeal, uh, out of body, not part of a being. Um, yeah, okay, I can hang. Come on, kitty kitty. No? Um, during a time period when corporations and uh, the word corporate and um, all these other uh, corpse, death, those types of sounds, in certain time frames, those words were probably exemplary and uh, quite useful. But when it comes down to um, how the external plane has changed, people, we kind of gotta, we kind of gotta remind ourselves to update our language too. If we, if we are constantly and ever only changing or changing our, uh, what the hell am I trying to say? I got something on my arm, man, and I gotta, I gotta get it taken care of because if I don't, I'm probably gonna be spending more of my time scratching my arm and less of my time talking to you. Anyway, so for me, the word incorporeal could be a wonderful word if we took the opportunity to let it be whatever it was supposed to be in whatever time frame, but also recognized for certain time frames that potentially we need to uh, give those words an opportunity to kind of chill out, you know, like not necessarily use them. Find another way, something creative that feels a little less of, uh, ooh, that feels good. Um, but uh, a, an updating of our of our lingual system within our own space, just our own person, um, being so in touch with the world, being so in touch with the changes that, that are actually going on uh, on that external plane, um, will <sighs> like totally, totally align. Um, but you know, like I said this morning, if you really want to work it, if you really like want to like throw down give yourself something to focus on for 10 years whoa I know I know I know but give yourself something to focus on for 10 years say here's where I am right now and here's where I want to be why am I still wearing my sunglasses I'm inside shoot so here's here's where I am right now and here's where I want to be in 10 years and then there's this bridge between the two spaces I'm an embryo, and I'd like to be born. Well, there's this nine months of time that takes place between those two. You know you're going to be born. Now, you might not necessarily consciously remember those moments, but energy's energy, and that's all I got for you. I'm not even going to get into any of that, but this camera, flicky, 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 always flickering. Anyways, so the same thing with words, you know. Um, use those words, but know that if if the whole world is changing in this 10 years if everything around you is constantly changing you somehow have to get from your point a to your point b which that this is like in a alphabet of endless letters by the way we don't like end in z <laughs> but um that's just my perspective um so if you want to get from here to here when everything's changing all around you you kind of have to dance with the changes and you have to say okay 
um, here's the new space. Now we've shown up into this middle bridging spot. But right here when we saw the bridge, uh, we saw 1974 information. And 1974 information had our bodies behaving like this. And then all of a sudden, 1980 information shows up, and then 1990 information shows up, and next thing you know, 2000, here we are at 2010, and we, we, we're, if, we're, if we're trying to get our particular self to show up to 2010 with the exact same behaviors and words and concepts and ideas and thought patterns and processes that we used in 1970, um, <laughs> dudes, it doesn't work. So to touch base just a little bit, you don't need to be like straight up NPR every day. You don't need to be on uh, uh, some activism bandwagon. You don't need to be the person that goes around and make sure the whole neighborhood's getting involved. All you got to do is just touch lightly those things that resonate most deeply with you. But again, rigorous self-honesty. I don't need to be hanging out in the bathroom anymore, that's for sure. But um, rigorous self-honesty, folks. You've, you've come to some agreement with your with your space that says this is this is the time Th now is the time for me to um, to really be honest uh, with myself this isn't about being honest with someone about their crappy sweater and it's not about being honest with somebody about whether or not <coughs> you believe in uh, <laughs> oh God for that matter um, it's really about are you lying to yourself? Are you are you not really seeing um, how often you actually lie? Dude, man, when I first decided to stop lying, I remember that um, particular process. I had a nervous, well, I say nervous breakdown. Um, I don't know if I can really call it that now. I uh, don't have nervous breakdowns the same way that other people have nervous breakdowns. Damn, I look like a fly. <laughs> uh, what ended up happening was I just finally woke up and I realized what a big pile of crap I was. I was like, wow, it's no wonder you're s suffering. <laughs> All you do is like uh, boost the truth just a little. Uh, hey, do you know how much money did you make last night? I made 30 bucks. And I tell them I made 50. Um, and I'll buy a round of drinks. Uh, granted, this is like... <laughs> 12 years ago, but point being, it's taken me that long to release all of the lies that held me in that place of bondage. And, you know, we think we're being nice by saying, I don't want to say this because I don't want to hurt their feelings. Dude, every time you do that, you're basically saying that your goal is not important enough, that what you want in 10 years is not important enough, that from your point A to your point B doesn't really matter. It's just something that you're pretending to show everybody so that it looks like you're doing something when really you're not doing anything at all um, other than spinning wheels and talking trash and trying to make it seem like you're actually doing something. And uh, basically, um, that doesn't really matter either because ultimately somebody's triggered by it. Somebody's ignited by it. Somebody's excited by the fact that there is this process that you can actually set a goal and, and begin baby stepping your way all the way to it. So... So that's good. Um, it's not it's not bad or good that you do or don't set these goals and follow through with them. It, it's just happening. It's your own world that we're talking about here. You're the one that actually has to live it, though. So you actually might be inspiring people, inspiring them to create their own system where they say, uh, I'm going to start watching myself. I'm going to start really paying attention to me and really putting putting this 10-year plan into, into action and and uh, and make it work and get creative with it and um, learn to turn the box upside down every once in a while and go, oh, right, I could totally grab the prize right from the top instead of having to dig, 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 dig. There's lots of tricks, people, but you've got to be eager and hungry to find them and want to learn uh, about who you are, just you, nobody else. And, yeah, people do get hurt by it. People do um, misinterpret and they, they confuse a lot of things. This is why that um, space of metta, that ever loving kindness, uh, that compassionate uh, open space has to be sort of the fuel behind that. Um, rigorous self-honesty and compassion. Truth will find you. 
You don't need to seek out what's true and what's not true. Uh, truth will find you. If, if you set a goal um, and you choose to really, really put an intense effort into it, truth will find you. There's no trick to it. They, they, man, you will, you will waste all of your time going out to your job to work all day long to make so much money to go out and spend it on a self-help book that doesn't even speak your language. Each of us has our own dialect. Every single one of us. There is not one singular language that has more than one person speaking it when it comes to the personal self. That it just is not so. There's one personal language for every single being on the planet and only you speak it. You can get help with it. We can talk back and forth and slowly start to unfold that dialect, uh, not because it's not unspeakable, uh, but because it's, it's part of the process of evolution. It's part of the process of wondering, you know, how, how do I get to, how, where's the bridge between me and this other person? If this person's here and I'm here and I know it's all one, how do I get there? It's, I just need to invent something, that's all. Just a little, a little creativeness, a little tiny picture drawing maybe and say oh this is what my box looks like and like oh this is what my box looks like like oh okay that's cool well uh can my box fit inside your box I'm like whoa i know where some of you people just went but it's that's all i got <laughs> it's truly 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 all i got and um and i love it i've been doing it now for over 10 years and um, and I do love it it's 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 an it's an it takes time and in the beginning there was a lot of tears and a lot of frustration and a lot of confusion and a lot of a lot of not getting it a lot of feeling like maybe I was going off in some wrong direction lots of fingers pointing at me telling me I wasn't doing something right I wasn't doing something this way or that way and I kept saying I'm waiting I'm waiting I, I can't do that yet because this, I haven't heard the voice I haven't heard the sound I haven't I haven't been asked to move um, I've been asked to follow this particular thing um, you each have one inside Everyone has that voice, that their own separate voice. It is not one voice. You yourself have your own specific frequency coming into you, vibrating through you, being with you, learning with you, growing with you, expanding with you. Just you. It's your eagerness to want to get involved with understanding each other that makes the big difference. My eagerness is like, I'm like eager bunny. Please, tell me your story. I want to know. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I really, I really just, like, love, I love the earth. I love uh, that I have manifested some weird thing in my brain that makes me believe that I'm an atom of the earth body. I've turned this earth into an actual body, and I'm just sort of, you know, buzzing around inside of it. Um... And I do it because I love. And it brought me to truth. And truth is, it, it's all one. <laughs> How many times are you going to say that, Adina? Forever. Do you understand me? Are you listening? I'm just kidding. You don't have to listen. Yes, you do. No, you don't. Yes, you do. No, you don't. You do whatever you want. Okay?